Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Hunter and welcome to a brand new SvelteKit video. In this video, we're gonna be learning about layouts in SvelteKit. And we're gonna start off by looking at the basics of layouts, and then we're gonna move on to nested layouts, and then to more advanced concepts like layout groupings. So as always, let's go ahead and take a look at the documentation to see what they have to say about layouts in SvelteKit. So we can see here that upon navigation, existing page.svelte components will be destroyed and a new one will take its place. But in many apps, there are elements such as the navigation or footers that should be visible on every single page. So instead of having to repeat your nav bar in every single page, you can place it in a layout. So then it describes on how to create a layout. So you probably know that a layout is named plus layout.svelte. And the default layout that Svelte uses if you don't bring your own looks like this. So it just has the slot tags. And they know here that you can add whatever markup and styles and behavior that you'd like inside of the layout. The only requirement is that it contains a slot for the page content. So you can see here in the example they have, they have a nav bar and they add slot here. And slot is where your page content goes. Now let's go ahead and take a look at a few examples. And to make things easier, I went ahead and set up a skeleton project with Tailwind CSS and Daisy UI for quick styling. Uh, but all, as you can see here, all we have is a plus page.svelte for the home page and then an about page with an H1 tag in it. If you go to our app here, it's not running yet. Let me run that. You can see that we just have home and we have about. So one of the first things that we can do, and like I said, I already loaded Tailwind CSS to the application. I've installed it and added all the proper configurations, but I need to get this CSS passed to my application. So one of the easiest ways to do that is using a layout, and more importantly, the root layout. So I can come into routes and create a layout.svelte. And then at the top, inside of script tags, I can import the app.css. And you can see here that our about page has been cleared, right? And that's because we don't have a slot tag yet in our layout. So we need to add that slot tag, which is a requirement. So we can add it like this. And now you can see we actually have some of the default Tailwind styles applied to our home page and our about page, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at probably one of the most common use cases for a layout. And that's going to be, you know, navigation. So since I'm using Daisy UI, I'm going to make things easy here and just copy and paste in an app bar. And this will, some of these components will come in into more use here in a bit. We can get to a sidebar and things like that. So I'm gonna just go ahead and grab this nav bar with menu and submenu. I'm not gonna use the submenu, but we'll just copy all of this over. So inside of our layout, we'll copy this. And it's gonna yell at me because I don't have hrefs inside of my links. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I went ahead and removed some of the things we weren't gonna need, as well as just fixed up some of the styling a bit inside of our nav bar. And you can see that it's now displaying on the home page. And if we go to the about page, clicking this link here, we can see that the layout still persists even on the about page. And it doesn't really matter as to where the slot is placed. Like we could place the slot above the nav bar, for example, and it would become a footer. Or we could simply, you know, add a footer down here and just say, let's just say the P tag here and say copyright 2022. All rights reserved, and you can see that this is also going to persist on every single page, right? So that's really the basics of a layout. Layouts also have layout.js or layout.server.js, which function the same way as a plus page.server or plus page.js file. And I can show you what that's going to do. So we can do at layout.js, and it also exports a load function. And we can just define something here. Let's just define a user. Say name is Hunter, email is, and then we'll just return the user. Now the cool thing about layouts is that this is this prop, this data prop is going to be accessible in every single page underneath of this layout. So inside of page.svelte, we can come here and we can put in some script tags and say export let data. And then instead of just saying home, we can also add a p tag that says welcome data.user.name. That should say welcome hunter. You can see now this is passed here. We also have access, it, access to it in the about page as well. So we can just say data. Whoops, let me actually add the script tags here. We could say about And when you go about, it says about Hunter, right? So whatever's returned from the load function in the layout.js is accessible to every page that falls underneath of that layout or every page that's covered by that layout, right? 
So for adding a load function to the root layout.js, it's gonna be accessible to every single page within our application, right? So now that we've covered some of the basics of a layout, let's go ahead and move on to nested layouts. So if you read here in the documentation, it says layouts can be nested. Suppose we don't have a single settings page, but instead have nested pages like settings slash profile and settings slash notifications with a shared submenu. Uh, we can create a layout that only applies to pages below settings while inheriting the root layout at the, with the top level nav. And they have a real life example here where we can see github.com slash settings. If I click on this, you can see here that we have this top level navigation or this top level layout navigation, I guess you could call it, which persists on every page on GitHub. But then if I go to my settings, I now have this sidebar here that's available within my settings. So if I see settings, I can go to appearance. You can see that we have settings slash appearance. So this layout is only applied to, you know, slash settings slash X. Right? So let's go ahead and look at how we can do that in our application. And I'm actually gonna create a couple of different routes here. And I'm gonna use the Svelte for VS Code extension to easily generate some of these routes. So inside of my routes folder, I'm gonna right click on it and click on Svelte Kit Files and then create a route. And I'm gonna name this settings. And then I wanna have a page.svelte as well as a page.js, sure, why not? As well as a layout.svelte. And then inside of settings, I can actually right click this, do the same thing again. I'm gonna create one called profile. And this one's just gonna have the page.svelte in it. And then I'm gonna create one called appearance. And I'll have a page.svelte in that one as well. So our goal here is to implement a nested layout so that only on these settings pages are we going to have that sidebar. Right? So we can go ahead and within settings on the page.svelte, we'll just set up an H1 with text 3XL and font medium. And we'll just call this settings. And then we'll do the same thing on each of the other pages here, just so we can kind of get an idea. We'll say profile settings. And then appearance settings. All right, so I'm gonna go to settings. I have nothing here on this page. Let's see, because I don't have, a, I have a layout here that I have yet to add a slot tag to. So let's go ahead and just do that now. So you can see we have settings. If I go to settings slash profile, you'll see we have profile settings and then appearance should have appearance settings, right? Cool. So now let's come into Daisy UI and let's grab a sidebar. So I think it's called a drawer. And if we look here, we can see that there's a drawer for mobile and a fixed sidebar for desktop. So we'll just take this here and paste it into our layout. And if we just click save as it is right now, you're gonna see that we have the sidebar here, but our content is down here. And if you look, Daisy UI actually makes it really easy for you. They tell you where to put the page content. So let's go ahead and put our slot here, right? Because this is the page content. So we can just move slot to here. And I don't want this to be centered, so I'm gonna remove these. And now we can see that we do in fact get appearance settings. And I'm also gonna make this a bit smaller, the drawer. So where is the width? Let's just make this 48. Awesome. And we'll add a little bit of padding here as well. So let's just do P8. Cool, so we have this sidebar here with some sidebar items. Let's go ahead and fill in these links with our settings pages. Okay, so we have the main settings, the appearance and the profile. And then I can also add a border to the sidebar as well. So I'll do border right two, just to kind of you know show the difference here that this is a sidebar and this is our actual page content, right? And if we click on, for example, profile, you can see that this sidebar persists on the profile settings and then main settings and appearance settings, right? But if we go back to about, for example, we no longer have that sidebar there. Same thing with home, right? And you can nest these as deep as you'd like. So we could add, you know, within settings, we could have a separate menu that maybe goes underneath of the primary navigation where it ha or add some type of breadcrumb menu or something of that sort inside of our layouts. So they can become as nested as, they, as you'd like them to be. So now let's talk about layout groupings. Let's read the documentation first. Um, and to get there, you actually have to search the documentation. You can type advanced layouts and it will bring you to this page. And we can see here that by default, the layout hierarchy mirrors the route hierarchy in some cases that might not be what you want and then talks about a group so perhaps you have some routes that are app routes that should have one layout and others should have another layout right you can group them in a directory whose name is wrapped in parentheses which does not affect the url path name of the routes inside of them and then you can also put a plus page directly in the directory inside of the group to make that the root url so this might sound a little bit confusing but let me clear this up for you real quick so for example let's just say that this is our application so let's say it's a dashboard of some sort where we have a crm or some type of application where we need to 
users to be logged into to even access any of this, right? We don't want them to even see the header, the sidebar, anything without being logged in. We want to redirect them to a splash page, a login page that looks something like this. If I go to tailwindui.com, go to components, let's just search here for sign in. I'm sure that a lot of you have seen something like this, right? Like a split screen sign in page where, you know, none of the other applications navigation or layout is visible at all. You just get this page, right? So how would we do that currently, you know, whenever our main layout.svelte has this menu in it. So let's just say that we created a new route inside of our application here and we'll call this login and we'll add a page.svelte. And then we'll just set up, you know, a, a login page, right? So we'll just do a centered login box similar to something like this, for example, won't be as pretty because I'm going to do it really quick, but um, we can just set, you know, the screen to, or the height to the screen, set the width to full, and then we'll say flex, flex call, item center, justify center, height full, width full, and we'll just add some spacing in between the inputs and the title. And then we'll create an H1. So now let's take a look at what this login page looks like currently. You can see that, wow, this is really ugly. Um, let me just add a button here. Okay, so you can see here, this is, our, this is our login form here. You can see that we still have this layout. And even if, again, we create a plus layout in here and we add our slots, you can see that since these layouts, all these layouts inherit from that root layout, there's nothing we can do here about getting rid of this navbar at the top, right? So let's talk about how we can introduce groups to our application right now as it is to kind of make things a little bit better for us. So what we'll do first is inside of our routes, we'll create a new directory. We're gonna call one of them app, which can be like our main app contents. You could call it dashboard, whatever you'd like. And then I'm gonna create another one called auth. So all my auth routes or my, my login and my registration are gonna look the same. They're gonna have the same layout, just different uh, number of inputs, right? So I can group those together and then the rest of my application will have this top nav bar at least. So that's where I can group the rest of my application at. Now, since we know that we can't break out of that root layout, it's probably best if we keep it as simple as we possibly can. So let's go ahead and take all of this, take this nav bar out of the root layout and we'll just leave our style sheet within the root layout, right? And then we're gonna move everything for the app into the app folder and then everything for auth into the auth folder. So for for example, for login, we're gonna move that into the auth folder, for example. And then we're going to move about settings as well as the page.svelte into our app folder. And we're gonna create a new layout in here, which is going to have that nav bar with the slot, right? So now if we go back to our main page here, you can see that everything is the same as it was before. We have our sidebar on the settings pages. We have the regular nav bar on the rest of the pages, except now when we go to login, for example, you can see that we no longer have that layout associated with this login page, right? So we could then define, for example, an entirely new layout for all of our auth routes, right? And again, this is enabling us to have essentially multiple, what you could call root level layouts, right? Because this, even though it's in this auth folder, it's still just a slash login route here. So it's taking from, for example, if I move this layout into the auth folder and I just add, for example, my auth layout here, you can see that this is going to apply to everything within this auth directory. And I could create another route here for register, for example, create a page.svelte. And then let's just copy the contents of login and we'll just spam a couple more form, form inputs here. And then if we go to register, you can see that we still get the same layout here. So we could essentially have the same layout on all these pages that are root routes that are not nested layouts, right? That are different from the ones with the rest of our routes, such as the app routes, right? So now that we've covered the basics of layouts, we've covered nested layouts and we've covered grouping or layout groups, I guess you could call them. We're now gonna talk about how you can break out of some of those nested layouts, right? Because we didn't really have a choice. If we look at our application or our app folder, we look at settings, we didn't really have a choice when it came to the settings pages. Like let's just say for example, that we want this profile page here to not have this sidebar, right? For whatever reason, we don't want this profile page, when someone clicks on this, we don't want this page to have this sidebar, right? We don't really have a choice because, you know, if we add a layout here, like I just demonstrated a minute ago with the login page, it's still going to inherit from the next level layout. So how do we get around that? We can actually break out of layouts. And if we look at the docs here, we can, we can see that it says plus page at, and you can see that some routes of your app might need to break out of the layout hierarchy. So we can add the at sign here and assign it to a specific layout. So we can say this in this example here, this ID directory has a layout 
layout inside of it. So they can assign this to this layout or they can assign it all the way to the root layout. So it would skip all the ones right before it. So let me demonstrate this really quickly. So right now the profile settings page inherits from the sidebar layout, which is in the settings directory here. So this layout here, which then inherits from the primary app layout, which includes the nav bar, which then inherits its styles, style.css, for example, from the root layout. So what we can do is we can actually break out of that. So let's say we don't want the sidebar, for example. So we can actually go into our profile directory here and rename this page file to page, let's just say at app, right? So we want it to keep the navigation bar, but we don't want to have the sidebar. So as soon as we rename that file and save it, you can see that the net, that the sidebar has been stripped away. So now we're only inheriting, let me extend this a bit. We're inheriting the layout from this app directory here. So this layout here, which includes the nav bar. And then if we wanted to break out of it entirely, we can just say page at, which will inherit from the root layout, which will, which will have nothing but the styles. So now we don't have the nav bar at all, right? And layouts can also break out of hierarchy, for example. So let's just remove this really quick. And then let's just say that everything after profile, we're going to have some more nested routes. We don't want any of them to have this sidebar. So what we can do is we can actually just add a layout in here and say layout at app. And what a slot tag. So now you can see that if we add a secondary route inside a profile, let's just say devices, for example, something random here, and we add a plus page that's fell here. Now, if we go to profile slash devices, you can see that this no longer inherits the sidebar either because we added it to the layout that is above it, right? And layouts can also go straight back to the root. So we can just remove app altogether and say layout at, which is gonna be the root. And now we get no styling, no nav bar, just the CSS file. So in this video, we learned about the basics of layouts. We learned how to nest layouts. We learned how to group layouts. And then we learned how to reset layouts and pages, you know, within those groups and within the hierarchy of layouts that they fall in. So I know the layouts can be a little bit complex, but I feel like once you start to use them a bit and you get the hang of them, they're really not too complicated to understand. But of course, if you have any questions, you can either leave them in the comments below or you can join our Discord. We have, you know, multiple members joining every single day that are, you know, offering assistance to those who come in and ask questions. And if you got value out of this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.